let's take a look at the VST bass amp as seen here in Cubase Pro 8. Steinberg has a long history of physically modeling guitar amplifiers and uh, when it did its first model in around 1995 with the Red Valvet plug-in. Uh, so they wanted to bring something special for the bass players. This will be loosely modeled after the same format that we see in the VST amp rack that was uh, found in Cubase 6, but again, designed for bass players. So we'll have six classic bass amplifiers. So we want kind of a valve amp, a Greyhound, a Green Tea, an iTech, a Tweed, uh, as well as Paradise. So we can see these six different amplifiers. We also have different pre-effects. So if you wanted to build a pedal board before the signal hits, you could actually have a compressor before the signal hits the bass. Or if you wanted to have a limiter or coursing, a DI driver. So you can see some of the kind of classic pedals that you can have here before it hits the amplifier stage. So again, we have our six amplifiers. We'll have four different popular speaker configurations in 810. A 412, a 115, a 410, and no speaker cabinet. And you could also have the uh, cabinet automatically linked to the appropriate amplifier head. An entire post effects scenario here. So if you wanted to have different pedals, whether it's a wah wah, and this could be controlled from MIDI, or if you wanted to see an envelope filter, a compressor, a multi band compressor. Typical stuff, coursing, flanging, and also have tape ducking, overdrive, man magneto, which is analog tape saturation, graphic EQ, reverb. You can have your microphone positions here. So you can have three on access and three off access mics, and you have a blend between the line signal and the microphone signal. And you can have your choice of different microphones. You can say, I want a ribbon mic uh, coupled with a large diaphragm dynamic microphone. You have configurations here, so you could choose whether it's going to be mono or stereo. And you can kind of see the signal flow here. And as well as finally the output master section where you have kind of a post amplifier EQ a tuner, which is very handy, as well as a master output stage. So let's go ahead and take a listen to some of the different amplifiers. We'll start with the classic Valve King here. Uh, we'll start with the classic Valve amp. So we'll start with the signal bypass, and then uh, we'll go ahead and just kind of uh, kick the amp in. So as we do this, so. so this is a dry signal. If you want to solo the bass. I want that kind of classic grit. If you want to have tonal shaping options, you can come right here. You can adjust the bass. You have kind of the classic shape knobs that are found on these amplifiers. Two different mid-range frequencies with selectable frequencies here and boost your treble control, as well as your master. So this is a classic rock sound. This is why people spend thousands of dollars on this particular amplifier. Take kind of a dry sound. It's really nice, but not as interesting. And bring it to that. So the next amplifier we'll listen to will be the Tweed amp. So we'll just open this up and again, we'll bypass it. And as we play, let's say it's kind of a classic uh, passive bass sound. This little mid-range honk. And let's say if we wanted to kind of tame the mid-range honk. So I could run it through a tweed amplifier here. And let's choose some different cabinets. If we want to solo the bass. And bypass. So 
that way you get to sit really well in a mix. And let's take a listen to our next model, which would be a Greyhound. So it's kind of a very popular solid state amp. And say if we have a part that's like this and we want to add a little more mid-range. So bypass. to the bass solo with the amp. So, another great kind of tonal shifting option. Uh, the next amp we'll take a look at is Paradise. So we'll do a little more processed sound here. So if we want to turn off our chorus here. So bypass through the amp without the chorus pedal. And if I wanted to just add another effect. So really great ways to uh, kind of dial in a sound where you want it to be processed. Now another kind of classic uh, solid state amp design was the green. So we want to go ahead and open this up. And we have a couple of different effects here. So we'll have uh, pre-effects of a compressor, an envelope shaper, as well as kind of our effects rack here. So if I wanted to have the maximizer chorusing, another uh, envelope shaper, an EQ. So we'll go ahead and just kind of listen to this particular preset. We'll just jump to this on here. So this is our direct signal. So if you want a very processed sound, you could do that or if you want to bypass your effect. So again, a lot of great tonal shifting options that are available. And the last amp that we'll take a look at is the iTech. We'll go ahead and uh, bypass again. it. Again, if you want to try different cabinets out. And in context. So there's a, a lot of different bass tonal options that you're able to achieve to really kind of make the bass sit better in the mix with the VST bass amp. 
So whether you're kind of going for uh, working with passive basses, working with active basses, going for a classic rock sound, going for maybe a classic R&B sound, or really aggressive tones with a lot of different processing, the VST bass amp will be able to cover all of your needs. 